Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV Q&A tonight. We're happy to be here and happy to see everyone here. Welcome. Yeah, we got a full house tonight. Thanks everybody for checking in. Um, I'd like to say... Uh, Ray's back tonight. Yeah, Ray's back tonight. <laughs> hey Ray. Ray was at a cookout last week, just as we suspected. He had a good time and we're happy to see everyone back. Tonight's viewer showcase. So um, oh, we have right, just a is. few tonight, but we're going to show those. It'll be the last 15 minutes of the show. We'll, we'll have the viewer showcase, so stay tuned for that. And if you have a question, just put it in the chat with, with a, a big Q. Q. Go okay. ahead. Magali says hi from Ontario, Canada. Oh, oh, Magali, you're up there already. That's awesome. Good for you. I hope you had a good trip, and I hope the weather's good up there. I'm glad you got the internet tied into you. Yeah, so if you have a question, just put it in the chat with a Q. I did have a question come in this week about the video about the hinges. The so jewelry box wanna, hinges? Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about them. I've got a set right here on the table with me. Okay. And we can uh, we can talk about them. So the, you know, the hinges, the jewelry box hinges that, that we show in the video making the jewelry box are a two-part brass hinge. We have, uh, you have one... Um, one of the hinge parts, the tube, or the brass tube, is uh, about 3 30 seconds. And then the other part that fits inside of it fits inside that diameter and is just a sixteenth of an inch. So you have these two that, that work together here, like that. There we go. So they work together like that. And, uh, you know, when you bend these, remember, you always, you want to bend the small part of the hinge tube with your grousing pliers. 
And then you want to use, just like in the video, you want to use the small files that I show you to score the brass hinge and make an opening in it. And then you can break it. And what happens then, it doesn't leave a mark. And you can then the hinge will always work for you like that. So in okay. the video, watch the video. And I guess, Barbie, will you put it up in the... It's the jewelry box. Uh, yeah, I'll put it in the community page tomorrow. But... Um, the question was what size those uh, hinge parts were. The three thirty second, and you know, <clears throat> while we're talking about hinge parts, Bar, we might as well go ahead and thank Sunshine Glassworks for sponsoring this live stream tonight. And when you go to Sunshine, just tell Sean you need the jewelry box hinges, the are uh, the three thirty second hinge, and then the hinge that fits inside of it. So you can see there's two different sizes. Can you get that? Oh, yeah. How about mm -hmm. that? Cool. And it comes as a set. And so it you comes don't have to worry about finding one that yeah, fits inside of the Yeah, it comes as a set. Other. So this one goes inside of this one. And that that's what makes your hinge. That's what allows that to turn. You can see I'm turning my fingers. Yes. Yeah, so that jewelry box hinges is a really good video. It's a really good video. And if you've got any questions about making boxes or anything, Thank you, Ray. that will definitely answer the uh question for any questions for you about making jewelry boxes so that's a good question though because you know hinges can be a problem sometimes yes but because we do have a video that explains the process and we're also repairing a jewelry box in that video yeah right? i believe so. we, we mm -hmm. may be i think so yeah we may be I think so. Yeah. So. so I hope you all have had a great week this week. I know you all have a question. One of you have to have a question. Maybe somebody something. ran into something that you couldn't, <laughs> that you're not sure of this week been, or maybe. Or maybe you have some news to share. Um, you know, is there something going on in your area we could discuss? Maybe a show or. Well, um, yeah, you know, Barb, it's summertime and then know. fall's coming up. Everybody's getting ready for their shows. Anybody, you know, are doing different things, you know. I know that Barb opened up some more classes, yeah, and so we to. have the, our beginner classes for July, uh, July, and we have a lead uh, a lead light class in yeah. August, uh -huh. and then we have a make and take in September. That's Is that right. it? That's so right. check out the website. Those classes are available. Come down, take a class with us. Check out our website right over there. <laughs> right up there. There you go. Right, right there. there. There it is. Check it out, and if you're needing to take a class, the beginner class is a, is a great refresher course. Those of you that are really up on your cutting and everything but, and would like to try lead, maybe you want to take the uh, lead light class, and that'll kind of break you in and, and get you familiar with all the different, uh, the, with the lead and doing the mitering, and, uh, and we even frame your artwork at the end of the class so yeah that's nice. a it's a it's a that's fun nice. class and uh so if those classes are available at conwayglass.com so right there right there right above barb's head and the glass blowing classes are sold out so far we haven't added any more dates yet but as we add the dates you guys will be the first to know we always let you guys know first um so uh, someone talked about, uh, Pauline says, who talked about glass kits? All the big sellers show pieces of glass with their signature. I have 30 pieces of Kokomo blanks of glass with their label on it. What is, I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you, the best place to find out how much the Kokomo is worth will be to go to Sunshine, go to their catalog, and then if it has the labels on it, you can look up the labels and you can look up that square footage. Yeah, you can, that would be the easiest way. Yeah, yeah. But what is the just the average price? It's of, uh, you know probably uh, retail on it's probably ten to twelve, maybe fourteen dollars a square foot, depending on what it is. I mean, you could have something that's really, uh, really nice, and it could be expensive. But you know, again, if you they're twelve by twelves, twelve by sixteens, you know. Sometimes uh, uh, people are looking for larger pieces, but then there's people that are looking for those smaller pieces. So what is the square footage price? Probably 12 to $16. So, the, you know, yeah, the average. I you mean, know what yeah, looks good. Yeah. You know what the, the high dollar stuff looks like, Polly. Okay. Um, yeah. But that was a good question. Okay, Brandon asks, 
Is there a way to keep copper patina from darkening over time? You know, I really don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know that uh, because I. I don't use copper patina in the shop anyway, just because I don't like the color of it. But that's just me. You know, that's that's me. It's not you or anybody else. The the copper patina is going to age over a while. And hey, here's the thing: if you're not using that much of it, uh, instead of maybe buying an eight ounce bottle maybe just purchase a four ounce bottle from your supplier in your area and uh because if it's just sitting on the shelf going bad you don't you know you don't need to spend that money on that it's like i think it's like nine or ten dollars for an eight ounce bottle of that stuff now i think he's talking about on the piece darkening on the piece not oh well you, you can the wax it but if you do uh you know i noticed that um, if you had a, a friend of ours send us a photograph of some windows that were done in zinc and they they uh, patinaed the solder on it and now the zinc joint joints are black and the zinc is kind of like a I don't know what it, kind of a rusty uh, galvanized metal looking stuff uh, it's real pitted and everything but the copper yeah the copper patina on the piece if you got to keep it you got to keep it from oxidizing because if it's turning black, that's the only thing it's doing is oxidizing, I would think. Yeah, it's going to darken over time. Um, the only thing you can do is brighten it back up with some steel wool and copper patina. And copper patina again. again. Yeah. If you keep the dust off of it, it's going to stay nice and. But if you wax it, it'll longer. stay nice for a little bit longer. Yes. You know, and and uh, you know, we had a viewer tell us that they used. Uh, lemon pledge furniture polish on their sun catchers and stuff and it works great on their copper foil so you might want to try that that's right okay here's a good question brenda asks i made a small sun catcher for a friend his sister who is new to stained glass said the direct sun will damage the piece i've never had that as an issue with other pieces in direct sun your thoughts no, well, let me tell you something. The direct sun definitely is not going to change the color in the glass. No. And it's not going to hurt anything else. If you structurally made that sun catcher structurally sound, the only thing that, that could happen to it is if your friend hangs it on one of those little suction cups and it falls to the ground and breaks. Yeah, the there's the sun. light doesn't affect glass. No, light does not affect glass. And no. if you think about the cathedrals with all the glass in there that's been in there for... 3,000 years. Yeah, yeah, it does not. And they may be unfamiliar with stained glass and think that it's the same thing as the resin and then the you know, applied the, the stuff that used to be put in like the that. ovens when we were all very young children. Or the applied stencils and yeah. those kind of things. Those they will... Could kind of disintegrate in sure the sun. Sure they will. But the sun will not affect your art class But whatsoever. that little sun catcher will prove her wrong <laughs> because <laughs> it'll hang there for a long time yeah. without being damaged. Uh, another question from Les. Ed and Barb, when you get into blown glass, will you have a show on it? Uh, now that, oh, hey guys, there's She's a little smile tonight. for you. She's pink tonight. She's celebrating. So uh, we will have a video on... Uh, with us blowing glass, I'm sure. I would think so. Oh, you mean a video on it? I thought you meant maybe a, a exhibit. Yeah, a video on it, definitely. Yeah, we definitely. Have a, we'll yeah. be doing some videos. And we have some. Uh, uh, we have a playlist on glass blowing, and we have some shorts on that, too. Yeah, we will. That'll be a lot of fun, right? Okay, another question. So, to make... A garden outside ornament, copper foil, any coatings recommended for humidifier, rain, etc. No, just you know the the solder isn't gonna the solder is kinda like plastic. It's never gonna go away. And so as long as you reinforce your sun catcher and hang it outside, you can finish it any way that you want. Black patina, copper patina. But eventually, because it's outside, the elements are going to take that off. But they are not. The elements are not going to change the color of the glass or anything like that. The solder is not going to fall off because the sun hits it. None of that is going to happen. So, yeah, just fix it the way you want it. And keep an eye on yeah, it. Yeah, and if you're know, worried about it oxidizing, just 
don't put it outside because it's going to oxidize. Yeah. So every year you might have to take it in, yeah. buff it up, put some more wax but on it's it. But it's just art. maintenance. It should look. Yeah. And so know. just keep an yeah. eye on it. If there's anything that needs coming loose or something, go ahead and fix it right away before it comes apart. Because it it's out in the weather. It's going to take a little bit of weather and it's going to... Right. Sometimes it will affect it, but not much. Um, let's see. Britt asks, I used epoxy resin on top of my glass project. Is that something you guys will recommend? Never um, did it. <laughs> not with lead or copper foil, but we have a we have a mosaic door from a dear friend of ours that has epoxy resin on that to keep the glass from cutting people. It, it uh, we they filled it it's up finish and it. fin to put a nice finish on it. But if you're doing copper foil or lead, I don't know. I've never tried it. That's not something that we would I don't, do. That we I would do. do. No, I don't um, know what. I don't yeah, know what your what application, application is, and what you're doing with it. That sounds so. interesting. Send us a picture. That's right. Don't forget, next month's viewer showcase. Let's see what it looks like. Julie Graves asks, my daughter is getting married in two weeks. I guess to make a frame for invitation, you would seal it between two pieces of clear and build frame with whatever colors. Are there any tips to make this nice? Uh, Julie, what you're going to have to do is probably use a... Um, if you're going to put flowers in between it, see if you can use what's called single strength glass or 332 seconds because those two that way it'll still allow you to use quarter inch foil and it'll give you a nice seam around the outside. Just make sure everything's clean and you use a wide enough foil that everything will seal up and then put your border around it just like normal. And the two pieces of 332 seconds aren't going to be as thick as the two pieces of eighth inch with the flowers in them, Julie. So yeah, use the 332nd or what's called window pane glass. It's thin, uh, but it's not you know so thin that you can't cut it and, and work with it. So I would use the 332nd, use quarter inch foil. That'll give you a really nice, uh, not a wide bead of solder around it, but it'll last for forever, which is what you want it to do. So. Um, did that answer your question? I hope so, Julie, did it? <laughs> Two pieces and build frame with whatever colors, yeah. 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 So they're really pretty like that. That's sweet. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, so if you if your local hardware store will probably have uh, what's called uh, just window pane glass, or picture frame glass, that's what you need. The, the 330 seconds is what it is. Okay. We have another question here from JM. How do you dispose of the glass muck when you clean the grinder? I heard I should not rinse it down the drain. Well, you should not. I definitely do, not. do that. <laughs> what is it? It's sand. Basically, it's ground glass. And you can do a, a, a several different things with it. It's not going to hurt you to put it in your garden and just let it go back to the earth and recycle. Right. Uh, like because it. it's ground and it's it's fine. I just yeah. cleaned the my other grinder thing, last week. I was going to say, Barb, why don't you tell them what you did with yours the other day? I just put it in a cup and put it outside i mean just dumped it outside yeah right into the garden you know we have a our, our we have gravel and and rocks and uh pine needles in our gardens around the building and that grinder is so easy to clean up the grinder the is grinder. so easy to clean up and i just you know got the muck out of it and then um i got a paper towel and got the rest of it out of it and threw that in the trash and it was it took me like maybe even it had stuff in the bottom of it. I just wet that, of course. Oh, but the cool part about the grinder, Barbara, oh, yeah. was that, so Barbara's got this off. She's got the light out. Everything's apart. Yeah. And, and she goes, she's getting ready to start scraping out the, the reservoir. And she reaches over and she just grabs the reservoir just because. And the whole reservoir came right off of the machine and went right outside. Well, I knew that, it, yeah. Yeah, that was so cool, though. So it has these little handles, sort of, little gaps in the side. You just pick up the top, but then I realized when I picked that top up that the other part comes the off, too. The comes reservoir off. The reservoir comes off. You just have to make sure you don't get the motor wet when you take that off, of course. Don't let any water go down there. It's beautiful. But it's a beautiful and, thing. You know, so easy to clean, put back together. Right, it's like brand Barbara's new. like, woo, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> it was really nice. <laughs> this is really nice. <clears throat> so that's a good, uh, that's a good, good, good grinder to clean. Let me tell you, it's so easy. Hey, Jennifer, just want to say hi to you. 
and Rick and Julie are here and Karen's here and Pauline's. There's so many people here, new people, old people, not old people. I didn't mean to say old, but people that have been here before, regulars. Yeah. Larry Mary's here. Shaz Ray's here. Okay, everybody's here. I, and Ron's on, here. Ray's here. Magali. Shaz Ray. Mm. Joan. Brandon. If I hadn't said your name, I you will. You see Miss I'm Mary getting in the picture, I see, huh? Um, well, you know, we said we wanted to get a Mary cam, and thanks and to did. you guys. Thanks to you guys, we got we a Mary did. cam and yep. a new camera. And a new camera, so... And I think that we're we're on the we're on the upswing with the video, new videos. I think they're doing great. And the, the cameras are doing great. The lighting's doing great. So okay, so thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate it. Okay, another question. Julie Rickard has a question for leaded outside sun catcher. Do you wax them as with copper foil? What type of wax do you use? Yeah, you can just use the uh, just use your basically. Um, Furniture polish, spray it on there. If the yeah. you're not going to hurt the you're not going to hurt the lead by by waxing it. And uh, if you try to wax just the copper foil part of it, you know you're just using the hobby cam around the outside. That'll be fine. That lead's going to oxidize anyway. It's going to turn a really pretty gray, and and you're not going to have to worry about it. Okay, Bobby said she made a sun catcher for a friend. Her friends. Uh, what have you started? <laughs> she hung it on her friend. Hung it on the fireplace mantel. I thought it would be okay since people make fireplace screens, but the solder melted and dripped on solder onto the floor. Well, that, her fireplace was really, really screaming hot, and you're really lucky that nobody got hurt because that is uh, fireplace screens are uh, about two feet away from the front of the fireplace, and usually. Uh, people don't build really hot fires in them anyway. So, yeah, that's terrible that you that she did that. But I would make her another one and tell her don't put it there again. Yeah, because you know the she effect. She just got it too hot, that's all. You know, 450 degrees plus. You know the effect of putting a hot solder and iron, too hot of a solder and iron on your glass for too yeah, long. Yeah, so why would you hang a, so, a sun catcher so close to a fire? No. So the... Uh, that's screens, a, yeah. The, the screens, screens are, are not meant to be that close. They're meant to be further away. Yeah, they're just and and in a much smaller fire. A lot of times, fire, there's a tempered you know? door in front of it. That, so, yeah. And a lot yeah. of times we've done a lot of up. repair work on screens, but I've never had one melted before. Okay, I am Alan. Had a question. Hey, do you have caps and aprons for sale? We yes, do. We yeah. do. We sure yes, do. We, do. I am. we certainly do. They're on the website, actually. Yeah, so we have the navy blue that uh, Barb and I are wearing. Mm -hmm. And we also have the cream color. That's that's the color of Miss Mary. And then we have, uh, we have black, gray hats. Yeah, grayish black hats. We're a really nice hat. And then we have a turquoise aqua, yeah. aqua color. Yeah. Uh, and we have one of our viewers come down from Ohio this weekend. Larry Freshwater. Larry Freshwater. Say, I want to say hi to Larry. Hey, buddy. It was really nice meeting you and your family. And thanks for sharing everybody with us. We hope you had a good time. Sharing everybody. Well, all of his <laughs> friends that he brought over with him. It was really nice. It was nice, nice meeting your uh, son and daughter-in-law. Yeah, son and, that were up uh, from Florida. They came up to spend the weekend. The cool thing was that he was one of our first 100 subscribers. He yep. was with us from the very beginning. Yeah, for he was one of the... First 100 subscribers to the RDRV channel. And Larry, you know what, buddy? Thank you so much. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your vacation to come by and hang out with Barbara and I. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. So Mary, she zonked out tonight. She's not really participating in too much activities tonight. I don't, what is she doing? She's Sleeping. just being good. Full, she's fully just fully being asleep. good. She okay. can't help but be so good because she's so good. <laughs> Right now. Right now, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right now. So, yeah, Barb, we've got a lot going on, and uh, you've got a couple of new videos that'll be coming up. Yeah, this week. Yeah. I have a video coming out. I'm working on the soldering, uh, decorative soldering video, uh, working on it every day. So, hope to have it out the end of the week. 
Maybe. I'm not making any promises because I don't know how Well, far we're I'll working get. on it and we're finished <laughs> we'll be finishing up a, a, one of the big windows for the live vote or for the Merle's Inlet project the, the, by the end of the week this week. So So yeah. We'll be starting it won't be long y'all we'll be installing our first set of windows on that project and I uh, really can't wait and I know the owners can't wait either. So if you have a question, put it in the chat with a Q. Give us a big Q. Okay. So uh, decorative soldering video. Jennifer says she's excited about it. I'm excited about it, too, because it's been a long time coming. I've been threatening right. to do it for a long time. Yeah. So, so finally got my and, act together. You know, she's got her new iron together and she's got it all. And let me tell you rolling. something. I tried Go to ahead. use that... Heiko iron for the decorative soldering, and I'm not going to be able to use that. I thought because that tip was the right size, and I thought maybe I could use it, but I'm not going to be able to use it because it seems like that handle, the way that that cord is so thick, it just gets in my way. Yeah, she came I gotta in and she's like... It. Maybe it's where's the other is smaller. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But we'll talk about it. I'm going to use the little Weller with a Yeah, we're going to use the Weller. Uh, she's going to use the Weller 1160A. So. And, um, yeah, so the things that you're going to need for that video are just uh, rheostat with your soldering iron. That's the most important thing. And one quarter inch copper foil. We'll be using one quarter inch copper foil tape to learn how to do the deck. Right. So if you get an opportunity to pick a roll of quarter inch copper foil. So up, get though, that on hand so you can jump ahead, right yeah, in. Yeah. So you can jump right into the video and work right alongside. Bar. And a restat. Yeah. And, and we have those on our website. Mm, I yeah. don't know if they're on our website, they but are. they are on our Amazon page. Yeah. So you can pick and up. And we have them here. And so. it'll be to you in a couple days. Right. Sure. And we do have them here. So if so. you have a question. So I am Allen chat. says he was uh, formerly from Norway, Barb, and he lives in Tennessee now. So we, I mean, no, not I am Allen, but uh, Britt. Britt. So we want to welcome Britt to the our glass community here. And uh, I am Allen. I really like my wooden handled glass cutter you sent me. Thank you. Uh, yeah. We, he <laughs> saw the video, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I really like it. Okay, so Ed, do you have a um, demo you want to do for us? Well, I think we wanted to, you know, last week we talked about glasses that were, that you couldn't hear. Right. Um, because of their, how dense that they are. Right. And, uh, but I was going to share a couple of tools from a, an American manufacturer that people, uh, you may need these, you may not need them, but... I've oh, got okay. I've got three cool. of their I've got three of their tools and I use these three tools in the back area and I just want to share them with it, with everybody. So Okay. So this is a tool here. Of course, we all can recognize these, okay? These are running pliers, but I want you to to see who makes them. These are Fletcher. These are made by Fletcher and they're made in the USA, okay? They are uh will run three sixteenths glass and that's about the thickest they're going to run but they do work really well let's try and i'll show you they work really well you have to come over here huh? but they work really well on eighth inch glass and they're really this is just in case like Oh my gosh, you lost your running pliers. I can guarantee if you go down to your hardware store, they're going to have Fletcher tools because Fletcher makes glass cutting tools and they're made right here in the USA. So another tool I want to share with you <clears throat> is this right here. Now, those of you that watch us installing the cabinet doors in the cabinets, the glass in the cabinet doors that we made in the video, uh, this is a push point installer. This, if you're, they're, your push points that hold your, your, or what are called glazing pins, everybody. So this is a glazing pin or a glazing point installer. And this is, guarantees you when you're using the Fletcher glazing points, they fit right in this little notch right here. And they go right into the wood 
without breaking the glass. Can you believe that, Barb? Without That's breaking cool. the glass. Yeah, I've used and this before. This is a great tool here. Barbara's used this tool before. On uh, my first jobs. And yeah, one of her first jobs when she used to do picture frames for people. So, and then this right here, this is a Fletcher. This is what this is just called a scribe, but it's made by Fletcher again. This is a great little tool to have around your shop as a scribe, which is what it is, but I use it for cutting thin and small pieces of plexiglass. This is much easier than dragging out the saw and the fact that it's going to, uh, it's much easier than, and it's not going to break it either. So, but anyway, I, so I wanted to share those three little tools with you. Remember they're made by Fletcher. Fletcher is a made in America company and we want to just make sure <laughs> Want to make sure, you know, if you're in your hardware store and this little, and you're getting ready to put in some uh, Fletcher or some push pins, get this little tool here because it's awesome. Thank you, Ed. I that like it. I just wanted, to, just wanted to share with, uh, with everybody that uh, those three little tools that if push comes to shove, you're going to need them. Uh, you can go to your hardware store and probably get them because they okay. carry Fletcher everything. Okay. And your push pins are definitely, you know, something that you can. Yeah, that's it. Fletcher is a standard hardware um, brand. Yeah, it's a standard hardware brand, but it is made here in the USA. And and those running pliers, y'all, they do work. And I didn't sit down with a pair of running pliers tonight, but I'm going to use these in case I need them. <laughs> They're right here by my side. Oh, Texas Tom. Hey, man. Thank you so thank much. You. Whoa. And congratulations on the new job. I just saw that. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much, Tom. We appreciate you, as we always do. You're such yeah. a good guy. Thank you so much. We appreciate it very much. And congratulations again. Yeah. Yeah. That's we'll great. Put that, we'll put that to good use, Texas Tom. I promise yeah. you. You see, we got two new cameras with the money that you all been putting up. Yeah. Next it's, is lighting. It's no, 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 no. Next is a monitor so uh -huh. that we're not all the time. Yeah, we're uh, going to get a new monitor. We have so. a little tiny monitor that sits here, and Ed can't see it at all. So you see well, him it's, down it's here good. kind of looking it's at it. It's good. You know, too. I don't want to, I just don't want to miss anybody, Marv. I'm sorry. But that's Check okay because. You know what? If I'm right here, y'all can see me, and I can see you rolling up and down on the screen here in the chat room, and I like that a lot. Yeah, I think we're having a reunion here. Everybody's here, right, Karen? Well, hey, Karen, I love your new work. That horse yeah, is beautiful, Karen, huh? Congratulations. You got to send that in for viewer showcase. I was going to steal it off your Facebook page, but that wasn't very nice. So yeah, so send it in next. Send month. it in so we can all see it. Yeah, so we can share it with our viewers. Because Karen has been here almost since day one, and she... Um, we are watching her grow. We are watching her grow, and she just did a horse panel, and it, it's precious. Yeah, so Love congratulations. It. Boom. Yeah, boom. Okay, if you have <laughs> a question, just put it in the chat, and we'll be happy to answer it. I have... There's one right there, Barb. Where? Less. Hmm? Less cold. I have a small piece of glass that you can't get a brush into it. I like to use spray wax and a Q-tip. <clears throat> oh, that's a great idea. Q-tips are wonderful. And then the other thing is, is you can always use uh, this, a s stiff paintbrush to get in the corners and move that out once it's dry. Because even a stiff paintbrush, less isn't going to take the wax off. But that's a... Cut, you know, you can even shape that uh, Q-tip with scissors. So, I mean, there's a lot. That's great. That's a great idea, everybody. Okay, so um, what's happening, Ed? Not much. And Larry, <laughs> you know, our friend Larry that showed came, came in last week, he, he said he was going to try and watch us tonight, but, you know, he always watches the reruns, he said. Right, right. That so way, he'll see this and tomorrow. So he'll, he'll see this tomorrow. So, uh, but that's, that's really cool. It's so nice. Y'all, if you pop in on a Wednesday, you don't even have to let us know you're coming because we like the surprise. Yeah, we'll be here on Wednesday. Otherwise, call us ahead of time and let us know because sometimes and we're we'll, out of town. And then we'll make sure that we're here. Town. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make sure that we're here. And then, you know, I did have a, a, a question last week. We were talking about this, uh, this DASAG, the GNA. Let me come up over here and... We're going to show you this right here. 
you can kind of see what's going on over in front of Barbara and all that. So this is the original. Uh, we did that last week. Yeah, I know, but I, somebody wanted to know what the number was. Oh. So it's a G&A, which is the manufacturer. The M is for mirror, and the 4068 is the shade of blue, and that blue is called Ford Blue. 4068. Oh, it is Ford blue. I see that. It's Ford Blue, GNA, German New Antique, M for Mirror, 4068 for Ford Blue, okay? And this stuff, y'all, is beautiful. I don't even know how Barbara found it for us, but, you know. Okay. I love it. All right. Thank you, Ed. Um, we have a question from okay. Mystery. Do you have any recommendations for a small, affordable kiln for home use? We have one on our website, don't we, Barb? The small we do on our Amazon um, shopping page uh, under Fusing Supplies, and I believe it's a Genkin. We have a Genkin. The 8-inch one. The 8-inch. It's 8. Our Genkin kiln is 8 by 8 by 4, and we bought it 30 years ago. Yeah, and it's it's been a little charmer. Yeah. And I think Magali has a little gen kiln. I too. think she does too. I think Magali has Any, a small... Anyone on here that has a little, small kiln and, ha, and has had good uh, luck with it, please yeah. um And they don't go bad. Out. No, they don't. You know, usually you can get your money back out of them unless, you know, unless they're really in bad shape. And they're so easy to maintain. Like... Like I said, our Jenkin kiln, I just put a new element in it. It takes one element. It was $9, and it took me about 35 minutes to change it out. And that right. was really, you know, so easy to do, and uh, and now it'll be good to go for another 30 years. So, um, Pauline wants to know, uh, hamburgers or hot dogs for the 4th of July? Let's wait till the 4th of July and we'll talk about it. <laughs> if I told you what we ate this weekend, I, I couldn't even be talking about hamburgers and hot dogs. Well, After I will say this. Everything I ate this weekend, I shouldn't even... <laughs> Y'all know, know that squash and zucchini... Hamburgers and hot dogs That's we what ate. we had. We had hamburgers and hot dogs. And then last night, we made this really killer, killer uh, zucchini casserole. And, and banana, banana nut bread. bread. Yeah, so we were cooking up a storm this weekend. and uh, Yeah, we, we had were. hamburgers and hot dogs. So we're not going to talk about that until July. Um, and it'll be both. So I guess that answers your question. <laughs> 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 but Ed didn't answer, and I'm sorry, Pauline. Okay. I don't know. Larry Van Horn wants to know, do you believe investing in a small ring saw is worth it for those on a uh, those very tight inside pieces. Well, you know what? I'm not real sure about it. I've never owned a saw, okay? And I have uh, been doing stained glass, building stained glass windows for uh, over 40 years now. And I have never owned a saw. This is what I would say. If you want a saw, my friend, and you got a budget for a saw, go ahead and get it. That's what I would do. I would get that saw and beef up your arsenal in your stained glass tool room and just, you know, do things that maybe you thought you could never do. But if you have to do them with a saw, it's okay. You know, it's, it's okay. Well, so I, I mean, you know, if you're working, you you're not going to use it all the time. No. You're not going to use it for all Think your about cuts. it. It's $500. Inside, how many panels are you going to use it for? And, that kind of, and do you have other more pressing needs? So yeah. if you have the money, so, why so, not? Yeah, it makes so, your job easier. Yeah, so budget yourself five hundred dollars, and get the, this is the one thing that I found out about the ring saws right now, y'all. The ring, the saw blade itself, is get really hard to get. Yeah, you can get the saw, but so, so check that first. Make sure you can get the saw blades before you buy the saw, right. because the saw blades are scarce right now. Right. So I just want to I give you a heads up on that. I haven't heard anything different that anything has changed about those the ring saw blades, but make sure that you can get the blade because the saw is useless without it. So. Of course it is. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. 
Thanks for sharing that, Ray. Ray has shared the uh, Amazon page. And, Thank and you, Ray. And we've got all our favorite things there, all the things we use and, uh, in our studio. And when we purchase something, we just you know show it there. And there's other things. We added some more things this week. Right. Um, last week, we talked about structural integrity of the window. We did. And I put that book, if you go to our books on Amazon, you'll find that book. And it tells all about how to build your windows so they're structurally sound. Copper foil and lead. It talks all about zinc and, and I mean, uh, reinforcement and rebar and all those things. Right. And it's just one chapter out it's of... It's only $25 and you will use it forever. Right. Right. And, you know, you can, you can purchase, I think there's, is it six chapters that they've done that are probably the what they feel, the Stained Glass Association of America feels is the most important parts of that book for, mm-hmm. the, uh, for the novice and for the professional. I think there's four chap four, no. Five chapters, right? Four or five. Anyway, they're all on that page. The painting, the structural integrity. They're all right there. $25 mm-hmm. a pop. And, you, and you, you don't have to buy the whole you book. you don't have to buy the whole book, yeah. Um, Martha said she brought, bought a, u, a used ring saw. Um, she uses them on the stamen cuts for her orchid panels. Yeah, I mean, if you got something like that, it just yeah, works out. Yeah, I mean, so there's perfect. nothing wrong with that. And she and the, got an extra blade with it. Well, you were lucky. So if, when you see the blades come up again, then purchase some right. extra just in case. And I'll... <laughs> what? Yeah, so Magali says she has a saw that she uses very seldom, you know, so... But there again, like like Barb said, you know, if you have if you have other pressing things for your studio, yeah, like Martha has a certain thing that she does, and that panel probably sells, you know, very well for her, and so that just speeds up her process, right. and therefore her all of a sudden her business becomes a little bit more profitable. Okay, so Am- Ray said that Amazon has the ring saw blades now. So see, oh good, yeah, this was it's and it's. Well, this is the first of June, so fifth or sixth, and uh, you know our Sybil Schmidt uh, running plier should be coming in any day Talking now about too. Talking about inside curves. Talking yeah. about inside curves, we're gonna be trying those out uh, live right here on the RDRV channel. Yeah, and probably next Monday night. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but <laughs> and we're getting ready. We're getting ready for our make and take class. That's right here. Uh, on Saturday the 17th, yeah. Barb, we're getting that all ready. We're getting all of the, everybody's patterns all ready to go and cut. And uh, that's going to be a fun class because you're not going to have to know how to cut glass in that class. All you right. Do They're going to learn how in. to solder. Right. Grind. Foil, solder. Grind. Oh, grind, foil, solder. Yeah, the, the last three things are the four oh, things. Oh, patina. And patina. And finish. What? Five What's going on? Stop adding everything. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so here's another person. Bobby says she doesn't use hers much, but it's nice to have. It's so ni- you'll find that. Yeah. Because by the time you set it up, most of the time, it, you just want it for those really tough cuts. Right, to and when you breath. set it up and you get water in the reservoir and all that stuff, when you're done with it, get the water out of it and clean it back up and put it away. Because you don't want the blade sitting in water or, you know, anything yeah, like that. Yeah, and there's no need buying a new one. You'll find that most of them that you'll find are, probably are won't used. use very much. Right. And as long as they took care of them, there's not going to be a Yeah, I mean, because the parts that go bad are the belt that turns the motor that, that operates the saw blade. And uh, the saw blade. That's mm-hmm. pretty much it. Mm-hmm. You know, other than that, you just take care of it. And, and, uh, I wonder yeah. how Mary's do- Oh, there she is. Oh. What is she doing? She's relaxing. Okay. Yeah, she's relaxing. Okay, you had something else you wanted to show? Yeah, I wanted to show this. uh, I wanted to show this product uh, that is uh, is made by Cascade. And uh, Sunshine Glassworks stocks it. A lot of your suppliers are going to stock it. But this is your your re-strip. Everybody says, well, how are we going to reinforce our... um, our stained glass window. This is what they make. They make this product for two different applications. Okay. This product, one application, I want you to see it. It's it's only an eighth of an inch tall. One application for this, what's called restrip. One application for it 
is to go in between the joints in your copper foil panels to reinforce it. The other thing or process that this is used for is this goes inside your lead came to make it more rigid and then you put your glass up against it. However, I will tell you this. Don't use this in your lead came if you if you feel you're going to need it because you can buy the lead came with the restrip already in it. It's already extruded. It's inside the lead. It's pretty rigid and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it cuts regular, just boom, you know, cut it with your shear. And your so do you use that instead of rebar? No. No, it doesn't take the place of rebar. What it does is it gives you areas that are reinforced, but it's not, it's nothing like the reinforcing on the rebar. So that would be in really big, maybe plated windows? Maybe or? plated windows, and actually you might even want to use this as part of the plating process too. So because this gives you that nice copper and it's pretty rigid you know it, it bends like nobody's business this way but if you try to flex it the opposite direction that's where you're going to run into a problem because it is pretty rigid so okay well thank you Ed, yeah. for sharing that and you know we've used that lead before bar with a restrip in it but you never ever expect that to be just the reinforcing that you need on a window that's just not uh, it's it's a it's a different application with it and it uh, it doesn't work the same. So. Les said if you um, if you don't know how to use grousing pliers, a ring saw is good. Yes. So. Well, Les, I, I again. <laughs> hey, I just I'm cheap too. And uh, like yeah, I said, I wasn't, I wasn't going to show you, I wasn't going to buy a pair of Sybil Schmidt running pliers to uh, just to demonstrate for y'all. So you know what? I called the man that what makes them. Because he didn't know if he'd like them. I didn't know if I'd like them. So the, the manufacturer, who is Bowl America, which is a German company, are sending me a pair to try out on our YouTube channel that they really like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think we forgot. I don't think we knew about this when uh, Ed wants to know um, uh, how many exhibits we have at Brook Green Gardens. Um, are you going to just try to see when we... Oh, they're going to try to see when they visit this summer. They can't wait. Uh, I think there's three separate exhibits. Well, you we know, I don't know. We didn't know about it yeah. until uh, Monday. Yeah, Monday. No, no, Tuesday. No. We didn't know about it last week. Thursday. When we were here. Thursday or Friday. I don't know. I don't know, but you know, whenever we blasted it out, we were just picking ourselves up off the floor because we were really excited. We were really excited about it, and uh, you know, we have a we have a lot of friends that are volunteers down there at Brook Green Gardens, and y'all it is such an honor to have our work on display in, in one of America's top ten sculpture gardens thank you so oh, that is I, like crazy i think it's three separate exhibits but I, I saw two i saw two i think but the the exhibits are placed with two beautiful sculptures i just love the sculptures yeah. they put them with so if you get a chance to go please go but we'll be sharing pictures yeah because we're gonna we're gonna get we'll get tickets and we'll we'll Maybe we go, should down go for our anniversary and check it out so next wednesday See how I feel. Oh, on Wednesday, you might not feel good, right? Okay. Ed's getting a, um, a dental work on Monday. So we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed so that he feels good enough to um, have the lodge. I'll be here Monday night. I'll let you know. I might be slobbering, but I'll be here. <laughs> His mouth will be swollen. Yeah, it's all um, good. I, yeah, Ed, I'm not sure how many exhibits are there because they have... They have over uh, they have over three hundred pieces of glass yeah. to work with. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to Gom Stained Glass. Oh my gosh, Mr. they Gom. are so sweet. Uh, Y'all are the sweetest. Thank you so much. That was a very kind thing to do. If you guys, I know you know about Gom Stained Glass. They've been on the YouTube for a long, long time. Um, they, we've watched them. They've watched us. <laughs> I guess that's Excuse how me. they know about us. 
but they have some great videos. So if you get a chance, hop on over to Gom Stained Glass. They're trying to get to 10,000. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, 10,000 subscribers are well, almost there, so hop on over there, subscribe to their channel. Yeah, and Mr. Gom, and he was, you know, he was he was talking about uh, some of the other channels that are uh, newer on the YouTube uh, circuit and that uh, but and he was kind of he gave us about oh gosh, he gave us about 2 minutes and a picture. So that was very sweet. That was Thank very you sweet. Guys. Thank you very much. It's greatly okay. appreciated. And y'all pop over to Mr. Gom check out his channel and go ahead and subscribe to his channel. Let's get them up to 10,000. And by the way, uh, Julie just asked, was it Julie? Julie was it you that just asked about Jennifer asked what is the new updated uh, the, the new number is 16,506. So that might be more than that now. I, I those numbers don't reflect that. Nope. I didn't have a chance to Those change. reflect. And the views are way up Thursday, too. So uh, we'll update them for next week. Yeah, Jennifer says um, they and have they're a wisdom funny. Wednesday. Him, him and, and her they are, are great cute, people. Cute they're so cute. Yeah, they've been in business, stained glass business, for forty years. They're they're like us. They're, they're pros. So um, they Rick said he just subscribed. Thanks, guys. Okay, thank you, guys. I think we're ready to go to the uh, viewer showcase. <gasps> Hang on. Is that good? Are you ready? Let me get. Here we go, y'all. Okay. It's Viewer Showcase on Glass Night. Okay, let me see if I can do this now. All right. Okay, first one up, Stained Glass by Pauline Miller. This is her precious little puppy. And it's a cute panel. Thank uh, you, Pauline. You know, and isn't the pug or the English, the English bulldog is a, is the one that is America's favorite dog this year or something? Was it the favorite one this year? I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I, didn't get I may be wrong because I've been known to be wrong. Yeah. Animals are so cute. They are, aren't they? Thank you, Pauline. Okay, next up, Regina Lively. She was in our beginner, beginner class. stained glass class last month. Last month. No, month before. Yeah, last month. Now, she, did, she has had... A little bit of experience. No, no it wasn't not last Regina. Week. Regina starts to be brand new. Her and oh, that's Mary. Right. That's right. Okay, Regina. So Regina, congratulations, thumbs up. Regina brought them to me, and I framed them for her. And she was just going to lean them in her dining room windows. And her friends are coming in from West Virginia this weekend, and they're going to have a big time. But she wanted to show those off. So Regina, I'm glad we could get that worked out. Your work is beautiful, and I'm looking forward to seeing new work from you, hon. Yeah, good job. Good job. It's hard to believe that she is just beginning. That's her so. first, basically her first window other than window, a sun catcher. yes. Out of sun catcher. Other yes. than a sun catcher. Yeah. Yes. So, there you go. Okay. Oh, this is Ray. Ray's done some fused glass. And at the top left-hand corner, you can see how it's laid out. I believe it's two layers. It should, yeah, it looks like Ray um, is doing some uh, uh, fusing. fusing. And slumping. And slumping. And he, what he's done is created that really pretty uh, spiderweb look with the orange underneath and then cutting up. The ocean side. I guess that's ocean side, Ray. It looks like it. Yeah. And uh, like so, System like ninety six. Yeah. yeah, like a like an old baroque. Yeah. And uh, so, Ray, the fusing is so much fun, isn't it? When you change temperatures, and uh, your bowl looks really good. And uh, good job. I love the colors. Job. Yeah, I, I love, love the, the colors. orange underneath, and then the and then the. Well, those bright colors, colors make you smile. Like yeah. And nice. Nice. And yeah. thanks for sharing the Congratulations. process photo as well. Thumbs up to everybody that was in the viewer showcase this week, y'all. What a great, great show for us to be able to show you guys' work off. So if you would like to apply for the viewer showcase, just uh, go to conwayglass.com and type in viewer showcase in the subject line when you send the message. That way it'll come right to us and we'll send you the link. Yeah, that's good, right? Yeah. That's really good. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> oh, it's all good, Barb. Okay. It's all good. Okay, guys. Do you have any questions? Yeah. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to Because y'all know what we're doing tonight. We're having leftover uh, squash casserole. Yeah. 
So next week is, okay, yeah. We may not, I don't know what's going to happen next week. We might, if we can't do the live stream on Monday, we'll let you know. Prior, well, we'll Monday you, afternoon. We'll let you know Monday afternoon, and we'll schedule it for another night that week. I think I'll be all right, because I'll, I'll suck it up and come on in. I'll put my big boy <laughs> panties on, and we'll go to work. Oh, we'll see. I'm sure I'll be groggy, but we'll, we'll see what you do. They only make your tooth go to sleep, not your whole body. Right? Uh, I don't know. Put me out. I don't hey, know. Hey, yeah. James said it's no big deal. Suck who? it up and go. Who said that? James. James who? <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. James. I'm like, Where in the world are you going? I don't know. Where Wait, are you calling know? from, girl? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, you got a question. What? When are y'all coming to visit? Oh, gosh. Hey, Who? Karen, we got so much work going on right now, honey. When he finishes his windows, Karen, we yeah, can, we can we'll, go we'll on a trip. We'll get a break because it's really... Uh, I need to just... We do need to just go on a trip. Yeah, we've been thinking about that, but it's just so, you know... Yeah, don't bite your tongue off because your mouth will still be numb. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Who's here? Look who's here. She's right here. She's checking us out. She needs a hug. She needs a hug. She's ready. She said, oh, I'm going home and get me something to eat too, Daddy. There she is. There she is, Mommy. Ray's having leftover Chinese. All right, I was thinking about having Chinese myself, just ordering it, picking it up on the way home. Yeah, I'm sure you were. I am. You still. were thinking about it. You're still thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it. Come here. You already had Chinese this week. That's all right. That's my tooth hurts. I can have anything I want. Oh, gosh. What a baby. Okay. What a baby. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all. Y'all heard it. I got it live. What's that? Calling me a baby. I know. No, he's baby. not. He's not a baby. No, okay. He's just acting like one. He's <laughs> what are you, are you, why are you looking down there? I'm looking up here. Okay. Uh, come to New Jersey, go to Atlantic City on the boardwalk and visit Pauline. And gamble? We'll go gamble. We'll go gambling with what we're doing? Is it, where's Mr. Peanut? Uh-huh. You know, our, our memory, Barbara and I's memories of, the, uh, of Atlantic City and the boardwalk and the steel pier are the diving horse and Mr. Peanut and the taffy machines turning in the windows. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Karen, come on down. I got a lot of sweeping. A lot of sweeping. <laughs> Every day we sweep. Every day, that's right. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot to sweep down here. And we're working on it. So, so how, what do you got going on with your apron there, Mr. Right there. Streeter? See that? It's, I think it, might be, it might be down too low. There you go. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, if, if y'all order an apron or a hat tonight, we'll get them out for you. No problem. I like them because they got the three pockets. The blue ones have the three pockets in the front. The white ones only have two. But I, I, it, they're big enough for your phone, for your glass cutter, for your gloves. For two phones. Sometimes I have two phones in here. Because she's working phones. twice as hard. I am. Well, she's got her, she's got the office phone, the landline, and then she has her cell phone and, you know, all those things. Uh, Pauline, is that true? Mr. Peanut is homeless. Uh, probably, right? Probably. I think somebody bought his costume. Really? I don't know. But do you remember how I'm tall he was? I have to look up Barbara? the story about Mr. Do you remember how tall yes, he was? Yes, I do. He was Wasn't like he nine on feet tall. I think he was on stilts, yeah. Yeah. I had probably had my picture taken Or was that him. a different character? No, that was probably. Okay. And then they always had the, the jugglers walking down. Yeah. And they always walked with big flowing pants and shirts on. Remember? Yeah, so if you want one of the aprons, you can go online and order it. And we'll get it out for you. Go to ConwayGlass.com. And the hats. My and apron isn't tied either. I know. We're untied. What happened? Let's, let's. <laughs> Here, we're going to tie ourselves together. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't remember untying it. Did you do that? <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to go get something to eat. They, sh they sold Mr. Peanut for $12,000. Wow. Wow. Good for them. <laughs> just uh, memories, you know. Just memories. A lot of people uh, 
never got to go to Atlantic City and see the diving horse and all that stuff. So. Eat the taffy. That Eat the taffy that pulls your teeth out. That's why we, we were both talking about, that's why we're spending a lot of time at the dentist these days. Yeah. Getting all everything fixed up. Things we did as a child. Okay. Well, they don't give you a handbook, right, Barb? No, they don't. They didn't give our parents one either. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> okay, thank you guys for being out. I, I don't see any questions here. Next week, you guys got to bring some questions. I don't care if you just asking a question to help somebody else out. Oh, Art of Mystery said, uh, "Will boot pro- solder prices go down anytime soon?" You know, my friend, Probably I have not. no idea. Probably not. I've never heard of any prices ever going down. No, they never go down. Once they're Except there. Taco Bell every once in a while. Yeah, but once the prices are up on, on metals like that, they're pretty much where they're going to be. Um, ideally, would be to find somebody that's closing up shop and and you know be able to buy their solder from them for 10 or $12 a roll instead of 15 or 18 so. Okay. So we did get Ark's question. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Art Castle. Okay. The kiln and the microwave. Oh, Pauline wanted us to let y'all know that she has a kiln, a microwave kiln, and that she uses hers, and it takes a long time to cool down. Right. And if you have any questions, you can get in touch with her, and uh, you can private chat. Yeah. And it, 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 not just a microwave kiln takes a long time to cool down. All they kilns all take do. a long time to cool down. Don't get in a right. hurry. Whatever you do, don't get in a hurry with with your kiln work. And I think Ray can attest to this. You know, he Ray probably had a whole day just fitting stuff together. And then six or seven hours firing, eight or ten cooling, and then we're now we're gonna slump it into a bowl at roughly twelve hundred and fifty degrees. Uh, and now we're going back up again over because we added two pieces of glass. Now we're going back up over five hours to a fusing or a slumping temperature at 1250. It takes a long time, y'all. A lot of hours. Oh, Ray (laughs) said you nailed it. How many hours you got in that, Ray? I bet you couldn't wait to open that kiln. It's like Christmas, Christmas, right? It's like Christmas, isn't it? (laughs) So um, I hope you all are having a lot of joy building stained glass, and you're very inspired by what you're doing. And we've got new stuff coming out, new photographs coming out of the work that we're doing. And we are so, so happy to have you all on board every Monday night with us. So um, next week, bring your question, questions, and then uh, we'll answer them. We will. Bring us some <laughs> questions, y'all. And, and, uh, and we'll try to, oh, I'll have some right. new My tools for you to come up. Work. And we'll have some, uh, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. And because, you know, we want to get... Our goal is 25,000 subscribers by Christmas. So give us a hand with that. You guys, we love you. We love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And thank, thanks again. We love you all. I'm Ed. I'm Barb. And we're the Streeters. Good night.